I thought we could have a little look at this Medusa T951 um, SIP. It's made by SIP. The SIP Group. www.sipgroup.com. <laughs> now I thought we'd have a look at it. I bought it brand new a while back. I've only used it once. Um, I bought it when I went camping because I wanted to power a fridge and a TV and all that to put in a tent and thought it'd be fun. And uh, it worked perfectly fine. And then uh, it sat underneath the bench for a long time under there or whatever. And then all of a sudden it just uh, wouldn't work. So I did, uh, I think I did make a video trying to get it to work a while back. And it will fire if you keep spraying brake cleaner or petrol in the old carb there. It uh, runs all right. But there's obviously a blockage in there because it won't run on its own. It'll only run if you keep spraying flammable liquid in there. So I think what the plan is, is to take it all apart, take the carb off, give it a blowout, give it a clean out. Got plenty of carb cleaner up there, carbon air intake cleaner. And if not, we've also got a bit of air. We can get the old air gun out, get the old compressor, get that fired up. And give it a good old spray and a good old clean out. So I think that's the, that's the plan for today. Well, for the next 20 minutes anyway. So there we go, there's our little carb. I've taken all this electronics away, I haven't disconnected anything. Hopefully we shouldn't need to disconnect anything. I've taken off his petrol tank. We've got our little carb here, it's obviously got a blockage in it. So you've got to be careful. Hmm. And take that off. Try and get this off without bending anything. It's always tricky trying to get the little um, um, throttle linkages and and governor linkages and all that rubbish off because they're a pain in the arse. I don't know why they have to have them. If it was up to me, I wouldn't have them. I'll tell you that now. But we might have to remove these little studs, maybe. Can we remove that one? I'll be able to put them back in afterwards. So I think it'll be the end of the world. Yeah, there we go. At least now, I can take the carb off and actually give it a proper clean. So I just got to remember the short bit, that short bit of the stud, that short bit is the bit what goes in the engine, that long bit is the bit what pokes out, and that's what you screw your, uh, your, your nut onto when you're bolting the carb back together. So let's take that out, they're both the same and now we can manoeuvre that and there we go one little carburetor so let's put this on the bench and take it apart and uh, unblock it, I can already see a bit of gummage whatever you want to call it, there's a little bit of uh, goo in the bottom there where that butterfly is, a little bit of goo let's see what we find in the bottom of the bowl shall we 
There we go, we've got our little bit of uh, a little bit cramped on this bench because it's a bit messy, but never mind. Not something that I worry about too much. So let's take the bowl off and see what it looks like in the bottom of our bowl, shall we? I reckon it might be a bit gooed up in there. Because it is about, it's been sat for about four years. I used it, I bought it and literally used it the same weekend that I bought it. And then after that, it sat completely on its own and didn't do anything. And the bowl was stuck. Oh yeah. It smells a bit funny. We've got a little bit of goo in there. Don't know if that's going to show up particularly well, but there's quite a bit of, a lot of um, little particles in there, you can see. So there's a good chance a lot of that has probably made its way up into a jet or something. And we're going to have uh, some more well, blocked up jets. It doesn't look like we can remove that jet out of there, unfortunately. We should be able to remove that one. We should be able to remove this. I don't know whether this is going to give us any access to anything. Well, that's not blocked, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to give everything. Ah. I think I've found the issue anyway. The little, the jet, the little needle. What the float um, controls that appears to be blocked. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a pair of these rubber gloves on because it's easier to grip little needles with these on. I've got to put gloves on because I didn't for many years, and uh, after about oh, 15 or 16 or more years of petrol and diesel on my hands, all my skin falls off, I've got a bit of dermatitis on there. So I've got to uh I've got to wear gloves now. Otherwise it just gets worse and it just hurts and hurts and hurts. Right. So if we poke this little pin through here get that little pin out and then we can remove the float. Now there's a little needle in there. It's attached to my little thing. This little tiny little needle, needle valve, as you can see, it's got some goo on it. Now I noticed that when I was moving the float, this was stuck upwards, which means it was blocking off blocking off the fuel so there was no fuel flow coming from the inlet pipe into the bowl because it comes down there into the bowl and then gets sucked up through the jet into the engine this was stuck upwards and it weren't down so I think that's main our main issue so yeah look at all that goo that's coming off of it on my fingers I ain't gonna focus on it but there's a lot of it so nothing a bit of carb spray can't fix there We'll clean that out, spray it over the spray in there. Let that go in that bowl there and let that soak up. So we'll clean this little jet, this little, not this little jet, this little needle valve. That's much cleaner now, there's no goo on that anymore. So now we've got to put this back on, make sure we get the float around the right way. I always get these floats around the wrong way. And I wonder why they don't work. That's the right way, isn't it, I think? Is it? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the right way. It's easier sometimes if you do it upside down like that and just let gravity take it into this little spot. Like that. Now if we put the pin in there, pin goes, oops, I'm not in the view of the camera. Oh dear, oh, never mind. I'm sure you lot will get the idea. Alright, hopefully, 
Hopefully now, let's see, can we get this to show up? I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to uh, move that like that. There we go. Right, come on, focus. Focus on that. Can you focus, please? Yeah, well, let's block out all that. Come on then. Right, focus on it. Ah, there we go. Right, if you look there, that little shiny thing with the black line on it, right, that's the little valve. Now, when you push that, it goes up. When you let it, it goes down, see? So, now the fuel will be coming in and filling up the float bowl, which will be here. As the fuel comes up, the float floats up and shuts off the valve. And then when the fuel becomes to be used, the float goes down, the valve opens a bit, more fuel comes in. It's just like a ball cock in a toilet, but can you see that little valve going up and down? That's what was stuck. So I'm still going to blow out the rest of this carb, put that little jet back in and uh, then we'll be well away blow it all out that little jet's not blocked anyway not that you'll probably won't be able to see it with this camera but you can see daylight through that jet anyway lovely right let's see if i can demonstrate to those of you that don't realize or don't know this is how i test this is how i know whether this little valve is working or not right you've got your inlet there for the petrol where you where your petrol would go in and you've got your exposed float blow on this and move that up and down when it's down it should you should be able to blow through and when it's closed you shouldn't be able to blow through ready hopefully you could have heard that i think it's i think you should have done it, it was close enough so i know that's working now I've blown all of these jets out, every single jet's been blown out with air and cleaned with carb spray. Just got to clean inside there with a bit of carb spray and an old toothbrush. And then we'll be well away. Old toothbrushes always come in handy. When you can find them. If you can't find them, you can't use them. I did have an old toothbrush somewhere, but I've somehow managed to lose it. Oh, there it is. There's my old toothbrush. Very old. Very, very old toothbrush. Brush around in there. Get all that nice and clean. Lovely. I'm happy with that. I don't think there's going to be anything else in there. Now we can put it back together. Make sure you uh, make sure you that pin is all the way in. Don't want it falling out. Put the float in an angle. I mean, put the float bowl in an angle where you're going to be able to get to it. So that's going to go on that way. I reckon about there should be adequate. Put that back there, stick that in there. And then we should be uh, ready to reinstall it. I did try to put it on, um, I did try to uh, put the studs in first, it's only because I like to try and do things just to see if it can be done, and it, it, weren't, it weren't possible to be done, so that's just the way that one goes then I suppose. Right, so all we've got to do now is put the front back on, 
Remember why? Right, this is where we see whether it's even going to fire. If it's going to fire, then I'll put the bolts back together, I'll put it on the floor, and we'll give it a proper start up. Fuel is on, everything's in there, so let's just see whether it's actually going to fire at all. Oh, a lot of compression now, I forgot about that. Give it a little bit of help. A little bit of help to start with. I'll span a little bit of spray in there. Putting the choke on. Looks like we've got the same issue to what we had before. should have run by now if that was going to run that should have run well, it looks like we've got the same issue as what we had before then there's obviously another blockage somewhere else ah I think I might have found the issue here's the fuel stop clock it's currently on off if we turn it to there's fuel in here listen if we turn this to on that should constantly flow it just kind of dribbles I think that's the issue well, here's the stop cock. It's got a little filter on it. It doesn't look particularly blocked. Don't know why it weren't flowing out. If it was just staying in there. It's not working very well, is it? Right, so I've made enough of a mess on the bench here now. What I've done is I've cleaned out that stop cock and I've cleaned, I've put, added a load of petrol to it and I've cleaned it all out. Um, so I'm just gonna see if it's gonna start now after cleaning that stopcock out because I think that was the issue actually. The second issue was that that was blocked or not working in some way or another. So it's gonna see if it works, then I'll take it outside and we'll apply a load to it. Hopefully it's... See, some small engines don't like running without an air filter, but hopefully in this case it'll be all right. Well. It won't run perfectly without an air filter, but hopefully it will run. So.
let's take it outside and put a load on it, see if that makes any difference. Alright, so I've put the air filter cover on with the foam in it, but I haven't got the screws to screw it on, so I'll have to make do like that, as it is. At least we can see if it's going to go with a load on it or not. start up easy enough though. So there we go, very easy and very simple way to fix it. All I need to do to my one now is find, I'm not going to find the actual screws I don't think. I think I lost them a long while ago when I, because this is where I stored it after I, um, after I looked at it the first time. Anyway, I need to find some bolts in order to screw the air filter cover back on. And after that, it's done. I know it's a little bit unstable, but I think with a little time running, heating up, running, clearing it out, 
once it gets running I reckon it'll be alright so I'm not going to worry about that for the time being if so I can always get a long screwdriver and adjust the mixture and all that rubbish but I think it's it's adequate for now considering it wasn't running at all when I first when I started doing this today and now it's running so sweet if you like this type of video let me know have you got any generators any lawn mowers anything that you've just fixed well, let me know because I love hearing about other people that are fixing their things because a lot of people would rather just either chuck it away or pay someone else to do it so much more satisfying when you fix something yourself isn't it it's brilliant